Alabama, we are going to read Motown, The Beat Goes On, on your new Achieve 3000. Please go ahead and do your before reading poll. Motown, The Beat Goes On. Do the before reading poll, and we're going to talk about the vocabulary that may be new to us today. Luminary, a person famous for brilliant achievement. Multifarious, diverse, many, and various. Syncopated, having an unusual rhythm in which the musician emphasizes the beat that is unusual or that is usually unstressed. Okay. Go, go ahead and join me in reading the stretch article. It is at a 1280 Lexile. And the reason we do this is to get us ready for those state exams. When we read those state exams, you're not gonna read anything that's harder than these stretch articles. Okay, so when you get to those, please don't quit. Know that you've practiced reading tough stuff. Okay, Motown, the beat goes on. Calling out around the world, are you ready for a brand new beat? Asked Martha and the Vandales in their hit, Dancing in the Street. For a multifarious multitude of music fans in the U.S. and beyond, the RSVP was a resounding yes. The year was 1964, and the company that released the song Motown Records was changing the face of pop music. Motown songs had a unique style, a brand new beat that had young music fans on their feet dancing in the street. With its driving rhythm, vivacious vocal harmonies, and brilliant barrage of brass horns was a prime example of Motown's signature sound. But that's not the only reason it's a fitting anthem for the label. The song is, according to the second verse, an invitation across the nation, a chance for folks to meet. So there's a little analysis needed, there's little analysis needed to reveal its message of opening doors and bringing people together. Just like Motown Records itself, which built bridges to promote understanding and advance the cause of racial justice. For a record label, with such a lofty legacy, Motown had modest beginnings. In 1959, 29-year-old Barry Gordy Jr. borrowed $800 from relatives to start a record company in Detroit, Michigan. He set up an office and recording studio in a two-story house that came to be known for good reason as Hitsville, USA. In the 1960s, the company released 79 top 10 hits, and it continued to churn out chart stoppers in subsequent decades. According uh, among the musical luminaries this label launched were Smokey Robinson, The Supremes, Stevie Wonder, The Jackson Five, and Marvin Gaye, who, in addition to being a star performer, co-wrote many of Motown's songs, including Dancing in the Street. Gordy's profitable pop powerhouse was, for a portion of the 1960s, the largest black-owned business in the U.S. What was the secret to the company's success? First and foremost, every recording had to have the distinctive Motown sound which was rooted in the soulfulness of black gospel and infused with the jazzy, syncopated rhythms of bebop, bebop. Gordy and his team worked hard to perfect every song, and artists on stage appearance and decorum were meticulously orchestrated too, perfectly orchestrated. Singers stepped, swayed, and sashayed through synchronized choreography, attired in stylish coordinated dresses and or tailored suits. It all added up to a winning formula for scoring smash hits and breaking down barriers. At a time when much of the American society and culture was stratified by race. Motown music was a successful cultural crossover that had widespread appeal all over the country. Americans of different races were turning up the tunes and singing along, rocking to the same beat. 
But the company's impact wasn't just about good grooves and smooth moves. While Motown songs were overtaking radio airwaves and dance floors, profound social changes were afoot. Activists like Martin Luther King Jr. were striving to end racial segregation, which was still a fact of life in many parts of the country. Some people thought of the Black-owned company's music as an official soundtrack of the civil rights movement. Although much of it wasn't overtly political, dancing in the street, in particular, became a rallying song for some of the demonstrators who took to the streets to march for equality and justice. Today, there's still laughing, singing, and music swinging at Motown Records, just like there was when Martha and the Vandalias belted out those ebullient lyrics in 1964. The company now focuses on contemporary R&B, soul, and hip-hop. Meanwhile, soulful snippets of classics, Motown songs from the 1960s and 1970s can be heard in recent hits, sampled by stars like Drake, Childish Gambino, and Kanye West. The company's cultural legacy is alive and well, and the Motown sound continues to reverberate. The beat goes on. Okay, guys, you're going to go ahead and read your article at your Lexile level and answer then your activity questions. When you answer your activity questions, the goal is always that you get a 75% or higher on the first time through. So I want you to shoot for at least a 75 or let's go higher. Let's try it for an 88 or a 100. Have a great rest of your day, Team Alabama.